everybody, and welcome in to Blue Jays today, folks. Where today, guys, the, the biggest news in all of baseball for you know effectively the past week right now has been the Shohei Otani drama. Did he gamble? Did his interpreter steal from him? What the hell is going on? We are going to talk about that because he just spoke with the media. Apparently hundreds of reporters, literally hundreds of reporters, were outside his press conference listening to everything that he had to say. It was a prepared statement, roughly 11 to 12 minutes long of him just talking. So we're going to break down what he said. We are also going to be talking about some Blue Jays news, folks, because today was the last spring training game for your Toronto Blue Jays. That is right, everybody. But just let that sink in. Like, Thank that God. Is right. We're, Thank we, God. We I'm made tired. it. I'm tired. Like, okay, I was super excited, as y'all know, super excited going into spring training because baseball's back. We get to see the boys on TV. But then that, 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 about, that died after about a week. And I was just ready to see the stats actually matter. Yeah. That's the thing. Because you got a lot of guys hitting homers. Is that going to happen during the regular season? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Are they going to hit at the rate that they're doing? Probably not. We'll have to see. Listen, little teaser right now, folks. We actually just recorded a podcast with Joe Siddle. Holy mother of God. That guy knows his ball. Oh, and just God. listening to him speak. Guys, it's coming out tomorrow at 10 a.m. So stay tuned for that. But listening to him speak about some of these Toronto Blue Jays hitters, like mm -hmm. what they're doing at the plate, the mechanics. Like you, you were, we were talking yes. the other day about how you uh, talk, like describe baseball. That gets me romantic about baseball, yeah. the way that Joe, Joe Siddle talks yeah, about Yeah, you know, we could sit here all day and we look at analytics and we're like, oh, like this guy hits the fastball. But it's like literally Joe, I mean, obviously he's professional and like he's spent time with Miggy, like he said back in yeah. the Tigers, and really analyzed his swing. But he knows, yeah, okay, hit the fastball. How do you do it? And he literally goes down to the the minor mechanics, which mm -hmm. you guys will see in our podcast. So big shout out uh, to Joe Siddle. Uh, lots of love for that guy. Yeah, exactly, folks. But moral of the story being, we made it to the regular season, guys. And the next uh, Blue Jays game that we are going to watch, it is going to mean something, folks. But before mm -hmm. we get into all of that, shout out to you guys for coming in. If you haven't already done so, please hit the like button, smash the subscribe button. Let's flash over to this Shohei Otani news, guys, and start getting to some of the tweets, mm -hmm. right? The first one that kind of came out that turned some heads uh, was when he said this, saying, I never bet on baseball or any other sports or never have asked somebody to do it on my behalf. Mm -hmm. I have never went through a bookmaker to bet on sports that sucks because mm -hmm. i'll be honest sports betting is kind of fun pretty dope shout out that way um but you know we kind of we anticipate that that he might say something like this right yeah I mean, well I, first of all you know for those who have been living under rock no offense if you have uh otani's dealing with the whole scandal right now you know, where essentially his interpreter got fired and his interpreter came out and said that like he was betting and Otani helped him like pay some of his debts, some of his credit loans. Uh, and now it's coming out from his lawyers and Otani's camp. And now Otani, that he had no idea. And we're going to see a common theme. And he's coming out right now to kind of protect himself and to continue with the story mm -hmm. that they're trying to do after Epe, his uh, translator, is now fired, told a completely different one. Mm -hmm. So that's the narrative they're pushing right now. We'll talk about the details afterwards. we get through all these. But, I mean, yeah, my first thoughts were... I, I, could, I didn't expect anything less. You know, like, what else was he going to say? You know, I just thought of, like, this would have just been so great. Uh, obviously, it could never happen, but just had an invasive thought right there. Uh. Could you imagine if this guy did this press conference? Because he spoke in Japanese, right. and the interpreter interpreting him was freaking Ipe. Yeah. <laughs> My God. Yeah. There's something there. There's a skit there. Somebody yeah. who's funnier than us. Go make something. Like, that seems like a Saturday Night Live thing, right. you know, that you can put together, man. But... Either way, that was like the first big comment that, that Shohei Otani came out and said. He then went on to say, Ipe has been stealing money from mm -hmm. my account and has told lies. Now, just to recap everybody, uh, because this entire story is just convoluted as all holy hell. Uh, Ipe Muzuhara, his uh, interpreter, he went, he had a 90-minute interview with ESPN. Now, in that right. interview... He told them, he said, look, Shohei Otani, he knew about this. We had a conversation about this. He was not happy with me. He was not happy with my decisions because I made these decisions. I bet on these sports with an illegal book. He wasn't happy with me. But he did agree after a conversation to pay off my debt, to get me out of the hole. And even a, a spokesperson for yeah. Shohei Otani came out and said the same thing. Yeah, that, that's where I get, that's why I'm puzzled. There's so many different layers to this story. We could talk about it forever. We're going to. Um, but why would he even come up with a 90-minute interview knowing that 
if this if this is true, if what they're saying now, the narrative that they're paying is it, uh, painting is true right now, why would he come out and talk about it openly like that? Yeah, because the next day, literally the next day, he completely flipped on a story, said, hey, all that's not true. I actually stole it. Otani had no idea. And then the lawyers, they also said the same thing. So, I mean, that's where I think a lot of the people, and I've already seen some comments in the chat right now saying, like, this is bull and like Otani <laughs> bad and whatever. And here's the thing, man. Like, we don't know, right? So you, you, can, you can speculate all you want. And I mean, I feel like that's what a lot of people are going to be doing right now. The, the one thing that I can say for certain is uh, it's weird and kind of suspicious, the entire uh, just way that all of this information has been fed to us. But now, now it seems like they're all sticking to their story saying, in fact, what Ipe said was, was garbage and he's been stealing. He's been lying the whole time. Yeah, and that's wild, man. I mean, I really, I really don't really want to accuse anybody of anything because I have no idea. A lot of us have no ideas. But if this is true and he stole money, first of all, how? How do you steal? Someone like Shohei Otani, do you mm. think that it's just that easy to get into his bank account and steal money? You know, obviously, I think he said, was this in the 90-minute one where he brought him to the desk and said, hey, can you do a wire, tra wire transfer and have it labeled loaned? So you know that's, what I mean? That's, he came out and, and told ESPN and said, we had the conversation, me and right. Shohei Otani. He wasn't happy with me about it. But in that same interaction, he agreed to pay off the debt. And then they both went. It's like, you know, you, us right. right now going to my computer. And then, like, you're going right. to log in and pay for it. So he said that at the right. time. Yeah. So now that they're painting this narrative, like, they're, they're making all these accusations. Like, there's if, if, this, if it's lies, right, it, which, I'm, like, I'm thinking it's lies, how are they going to prove that? How does someone like APA get into Shohei Otani's bank account, which is probably managed by a large financial corporation? You got to right. imagine, right? Like, I'm not just going to have like my guy, my interpreter, like handle my bank account that has like oh, it's almost going to have seven hundred million dollars eventually mm -hmm. in it. Like, so that for me, that's also another kind of red flag. Well, it, it is, yeah, because again, like, what are the details here? And that's something that Shohei Otani, like from our understanding, just looking at the tweets and looking at the quotations, what are the details? to all of this. I mean, like, he didn't allow people to ask questions right now. Yeah. I mean, you can't really make that anything because we don't know what that means, if that meant anything or not. Mm -hmm. I feel like this situation, even if, again, like, even if Shohei Otani was completely innocent here, never bet on anything, like, and we're taking for him for his word, even if that's completely true, having people ask you questions, I could see yeah. how you could trip up and, yeah. and say something the wrong way. So I understand why he didn't want to do that. Um, but yeah, you're right. There's not a whole lot of details here about how this guy would have gotten into the bank account. And then also, too, yeah. I know that Shohei Otani is playing 162 games of baseball, and he's really busy, but, like, you didn't notice four and a half mil missing? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know how much money's in your bank account, that's but, like... like that, that's why I'm wondering if he has someone managing his finances for him. And, like, you wouldn't think someone would flag him, like, oh, yeah, we just had an e-transfer for... Or a wire transfer yeah. for 500 grand. Yeah. Um, did you do this? Like, you yeah, know, somebody just bet a mil on the over? Um, yeah. Yeah. So actually, this is another tweet that came out right here to kind of finishing off what we're talking about. Otani said that Ipe told him that he was the one sending the payments from Otani's account. So he basically is saying like, yeah, Ipe was sending the payments from the back end of the account. Like, like, what do you do? Like James Bond, like, you know, show Otani's doing finances in the late night and here comes Ipe. Like maybe show Otani leaves, goes mm -hmm. grab a, gra grabs a glass of water. Ipe comes in and yeah, $500,000. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I think that like, again, uh, if, if we're taking what he's saying right now as fact, right? If we're taking what he's saying as fact, then I would imagine that they're going to come out a little bit later and they're going to say that, well, through their time being best friends, through their time, their working relationship, mm -hmm. at one point or another, Ipe Muzihara gained access to his account. You right. know, got his, got his passcode, got his information. And I, I guess I could see that to an extent, you know, like there's, there's a possibility right. if you're working that closely with somebody for that long. For sure. And oh, here's the thing though, they might not even need to prove it because you have Ipe who's going to fall on a sword. He's yeah. already fallen on a sword. So if they say it and he goes, yep, I did it. I, I went and I sent the transfers myself. Then it's like, well, where was the investigation? You're yeah. literally, you're, you're claiming you're the scapegoat. No, I, I think that, um, and I think a lot of people are kind of aligned right now as to how this story is going to go. <laughs> Um, he's not going anywhere, folks, right? Like, if you have a, a willing fall man, even if yeah. that guy did it or not, well, it doesn't matter because this guy's willing to take the hit, you know? So literally, I, I feel like we're going to speculate on this probably a lot more, and there's going to be more information that comes out about this later down the line in the investigation. But unless, like, some damning evidence mm -hmm. comes out, 
that that somehow puts Otani at, at the scene of a, of a betting <laughs> thing right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Nothing's going to happen to the guy because MLB loves him. The Dodgers love him. It's clear that he and his lawyers now are taking the stance that this guy stole the money from us, and that guy is also taking the stance that, yes, I did. Yeah. So with, with that being said, I mean, the most logical prediction here is Ipe gets in trouble, and I mean, that's quite a friend if he's willing to like literally get in trouble, for, unless it is true that he actually stole, and, and he feels bad and guilty, and now he's admitting it right mm, now. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I still think it's... I still think there's something not being said. Obviously, there's right. there's lies all over the place, right? So there's got to be something in there that we're missing. And I got a feeling, look, if the way they're setting it up, the way he's willing to fall on a sword for this guy, that's going to be it. And we're going to forget about it. And they're going to try to move on. Well, I'll tell you right now, that's what I would imagine that's what MLB wants. Yes. Even if Otani is guilty of betting, even if Otani was betting on baseball, which yep. I'm not saying that he is, because no. he came out and said that he's not doing that, but I'm not saying that he is. But even if he was... Uh, the MLB would still want this guy in, yes. in their freaking game because he just brings so much viewership, yeah. right? Like, he's just such an icon. He's the golden boy of the MLB. So, uh, he did say one more thing right here. I forget what it was right now. Right. I think it was the um, – oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. It was, yeah. it was this one right here just saying that he never agreed – to pay off the debt or make payments to the bookmaker. So that whole conversation that Adam and I were just having about how, uh, you know, Otani and Ipe had this, you know, conversation, this heated conversation about how Ipe's four and a half in the hole. And then Ipe said that, oh, we went to the computer together. Apparently that was never the case. So this kind of covers Otani's bases from the first story, Mm -hmm. because in the first story, it was like, I never bet on anything I'm just, I'm just getting my guy out of the hole. I'm just paying off his debt. But that's still illegal. Right. That's right, still exactly. illegal. That, Your name's that, on the transfer. Exactly. Yeah. And you're, uh, you know, I was reading an article that said, well, you're, you're funding you're illegal funding activity. Illegal. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So even though, even though your intentions might have been 100% good and you were just trying to help your guy out, doesn't matter. And, and so right here when he says this, that covers that base. Right. And uh, is it true? Is it not true? <laughs> I feel like we'll never find out, man. Dude. Um, look at that first comment. That's me. That's me. Grumpy, this story ain't adding up, buddy. That's me, dude. (laughs) Look, at the end of the day, I think that we could all agree that the best way to put this, and again, I don't want to make any sweeping accusations or or whatever, but the best way to put this, it's sketchy. It is. It's just sketchy. And and don't get your hopes up to, for some sort of like revelation, like, oh my God, Otani actually did do it. Like, I I think they're going to, they're right now probably trying to find all their loose ends and they're going to try and tie them up. They don't want that getting out. This is a a question. This is Mm -hmm. an interesting one right here. If this was a different guy other than Shohei Otani, if this yeah. was a different dude, because everybody loves Shohei Otani, let's, I, I still love Shohei Otani, even after all oh, this sure. stuff. Like, at the end of the day, the worst possible case scenario here is that he was gambling, okay? I mean, yeah. I sports bet all the time. You know, yeah. we're literally sponsored by Betway, folks. Betway. So, I mean, like, I don't hate Otani whatsoever. I'm, I'm no. disappointed that he picked the Dodgers of the Blue Jays. Yes. But, sure. I, you know, I still love Otani. If this was a different guy, yeah. maybe somebody who, maybe somebody who is an outspoken individual, I think back to the Trevor Bauer stuff, mm-hmm. right? If this was somebody who potentially didn't have the same clout as Otani or or had the influence on the MLB like that, do you think that they go about this differently? Do you think that they get punished? MLB? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that the camp of the person would try to protect them, but how powerful is that camp? Right. Like, depending on the, the person that you're talking about. Like, if it was oh, Joey Wendell. Yeah. You know, like, it's going to yeah. be completely different. I think Joey Wendell's out of the league now. Right. You know, like, MLB has more power than them. However, because that MLB doesn't need Joey Wendell. MLB needs... Joey Otani. This get... is also no slander to Joey Wendell. No, okay, I'm, this yeah. guy just caught a stray. I know. Hey, look, hey, look, unexpected stray for yeah. me. But you're Joey Wendell, and I think you'd probably agree. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and I think a lot of people would agree as well. And I think that, um, and this is part of the reason why I think walking into this season, and this is no hate to Dodgers fans or anything like that, but you are gonna see teams go up against the LA Dodgers like it's their Super Bowl, like it's their World oh, Series. God. I heard Jake from um, from Talking Baseball yeah. talking about it that way. And and not only have they gone out, they've got everybody. Not only has Mookie Betts said, well, like, we're the best, and, like, mm-hmm. for you guys, it's your World Series, which is kind of true. But now you're also watching the greatest player in the world go through this scandal, and MLB is going to 
I, I exactly. assume yep. probably, even though they're going to do this investigation, yep. probably treat it very lightly compared yep. to how they would do it to somebody else on a different team. I saw a funny meme of like a really weak security check and it's like, you know, this is MLB's, you know, investigation on Tony. It's just like, mm, they were done. Yeah. You know, like it's really, it, that's what it's going to feel like. I feel like they're going to sit in a room. FA's going to go, I did it. Shohei Otani's team camps. Camp's going to say he did it. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, that settles that. The Dodgers need to win the World Series. Because yeah, they do. if they don't, the outcry from the internet, just like memeing them, and like if they get swept again by the Arizona Diamondbacks in oh, any capacity, yeah. like yeah. It's, it, they're going to lose it, right? It's just like now, and it sucks because I like the city of LA and I don't actually have anything against the LA Dodgers. And I don't have anything against the players that are there no, either. I like no. Mookie Betts, and I like Freddie Freeman, and I like Shohei Otani. But you put them all together, yeah. you pay them the most money, you have this thing go on. Now I don't like you anymore. Hey, look, you don't like the identity of the Dodgers. Correct. You don't. It's not about the people or the fans or the city. It's who, what they represent. Correct. <laughs> it's what they represent. Correct, man. Yeah. You know? So. That is what Shohei Otani had to say today, guys, about this ongoing scandal. Uh, there is going to be an investigation by the MLB about mm -hmm. all of this. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I imagine that it's going to be relatively light, but that is still going to happen. So we might hear more about this story. But for now, they are sticking to the fact that Ife stole the money. Before we get to the Toronto Blue Jays mm -hmm. updates for this opening day, let's give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. Time for. Time for a quick shout out to Betway. Betway is the best place to make all of your sports bets on all of your favorite teams. Betway is also in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Must be 19 years older to participate. And guys, please bet responsibly. Now, back to the content. Shout out to Betway, everybody. Just perfect timing for, right. for that ad what, right there. That's going to say, hey, bet responsibly and legally. Well, I'll tell you Can what, we do man, that? If, if he would have came, if he would have came to Toronto, this yes. would have been a big, big different story. Oh. No, who cares then? Uh, it'd be about MLB. Like, did he bet on MLB games? Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. if it's like, oh, I, I bet on soccer. You know, You're know, you allowed. Cool. You're allowed, it's buddy. It's Canada. It's yeah. Ontario. Welcome. Welcome. Well, shout out to one of the biggest free agent acquisitions that the Toronto Blue Chiefs have had in recent years being Kevin Gosman. This guy is a phenomenal mm. human being, and he is the ace of this squad. And goddamn. Did he look pretty good today in his spring training outing? He did. Really short leash on the guy. I think he pitched just over 50 uh, innings. Uh, right over here, we have a tweet. This is a little bit of a correction, though, guys. He did pitch, uh, or he did give up one earned run. This yeah. is after the fact. This was tweeted, like, right after he got pulled. He gave up a base runner. Uh, three hits, no walks. You like to see that in seven strikeouts in Massive. three innings. Massive. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. But the big thing here is... The innings. Like, yes, I love that Kevin Gosselin's making the move towards the opening day roster, but he did only pitch, like, 50 pitches. Uh, the next step would probably be logically 65, 70, working himself up right mm -hmm. from an injury, kind of like, uh, you know, a delayed spring training. Mm -hmm. But that's better than zero pitches from Kevin Gosman. And I, I will, I'm going to be happy to see, hopefully, this guy with the Blue Jays opening day roster. I think he will be put on the roster at this rate. I don't think you, after seeing this, I don't think you have any questions. Yeah, well, flash over to the next tab that we have open right there. That's uh, Keegan Matheson just saying that, yeah, he is. He appears ready for the start of the mm -hmm. season. And this is so critical, guys. Again, I, I'm going to shout out the uh, the interview that we have coming tomorrow mm -hmm. with Joe Siddle. One of the big talking points, one of the big conversations is the fact that when we were in this offseason, the entire time it was offense, lineup, offense, lineup, hitting. Mm -hmm. You know, are we going to score runs? How is the runners in scoring? Because that, that was everything, right? Mm -hmm. We need big bats. We need acquisitions. You get to right now, and and one week before the season, whoa! Now it's the now it's the fucking pitching, and everybody's yeah. losing their minds about yeah. how these guys are injured. We need innings, and it and it's just so critical having this guy be ready because if you didn't, you're not gonna have Al Manoa. You're not gonna have Al Manoa. That's that's relatively guaranteed at this point. And if you didn't have this dude, then that means that you're going back to back with like Bowden Francis, right. who I'm excited about, and then. You know, Mitch White, like, what's yeah. up? Look, look, I, I think I'd add my time player. for a quick yeah, shout out to here. Betway. Betway is the best place to make. All right, guys, getting used to it, getting getting used to this whole new setup. Um, but yeah, for me, I think that fixes a ton of problems. Like we were we were out here looking for innings, and now you're you might get four or five innings from Kevin Gosman on that fifth day. That's four or five less innings that are gonna have to be pitched out of the bullpen, and we're gonna get to this topic. Yeah. The that is looking pretty depleted right now. Yes. Like the le the more you can eat up, the more you can help out the other pitchers in your staff and take the weight off their shoulders, the better. Hell, I mean, if you start the season with Burrios and 
and, and Bassett and Kikuchi and then Bowden Francis technically being the five, even though he's going to go four. Um, maybe he goes five, depending on how they want to lay it out. Uh, dude, I'm okay with that. Originally, we had Alec Manoa like we wanted to, yeah. but I'm, I'm feeling a hell of a lot more confident in Bowden Francis right now, almost better than I did Alec Manoa. 100%, dude. Year. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we've seen Alec Manoa hit the floor of floors, right? And that's the last thing that we saw from him. And in the one spring training outing that this guy had, three batters hit, multiple earned runs given up, not a lot of length there. Again, it's spring training. You, you don't want to completely overreact, but like, it, it didn't instill us with a whole lot of confidence here. So, Bowden France is coming in. I'm excited about it. And if that's the one question mark that you have in your rotation, I am all about it, guys. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look right now at the schedule of these Blue Jays. Just to in, y remind everybody that we got tough sledding ahead and we're going to need the pitching. It goes race, race, race. Rays, Houston, Yankees, Mariners. I was mm -hmm. looking. Toronto Blue Jays don't have a single off day until I think it's April 11th. Yeah, that's a yeah. long time to to start the season off, and especially if you didn't have Kevin Gosman. Yeah, I, I, I talked about this in a video recently, kind of highlighting. Uh, it was about Ricky Tiedemann and how, like, do they call up Ricky Tiedemann? Even Joe Siddle uh, even talked about it to us. He like, was, yeah. You know, like, do they decide to do that early? I personally, I don't think so. Because especially now you've got Kevin Gosman coming back, you can afford that a little bit. Um, but they're definitely going to need innings here, guys, because Rays, great lineup. Yep. Uh, Houston Astros, one of the best lineups in baseball for the longest time. And then Yankees, even though, you know, you could argue, uh, like, they're top-heavy, you know, not the bottom part you can work through. I mean, you get beat up by uh, Judge, and, uh, Judge and Soto, like, that's going to be some damage. You know, they, they could really work you. So, for me, that's going to be a tough stre stretch, especially, hell, even going into Yankees, if you just had seven days in a row mm -hmm. of pure getting worked, mm -hmm. you're going to have to now, I'm facing Soto, who am I going to pitch? Like, if, I, if we get down early and, you know, and, and, and we have to push someone in, Pearson against Soto in a critical yeah. at-bat, like, I could see that happening. So, yeah, we're, we're going to have some tough sledding. I do want to transition to that bullpen because that kind of answer that kind of like highlights a lot of what we're talking about in terms of these uh, bullpen guys. But before we do though, very quickly, who do you where do you start him? If Kevin Gosman's good to go, I was just thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Do you start him in the last game against the Rays or the first game against the Astros? I have my answer. I'm curious to hear what you say. Yeah, see, personally, I would have went this and let, let me flash it back over mm -hmm. here. I would have went this. I would have went yes, uh, uh, Burrios, Bassett to begin. You gotta love that. I would have went then Bowden, mm. uh, three. Then I would have went Gosman. Mm -hmm. against the Rays, because it's your division. You want to have your best guys. If he was ready, of course. I don't want to force anything. Mm -hmm. And then, then I went with Kikuchi Astros. Why? Because you got Alvarez and you've got Tucker, who are good left-handed hitters, and I would have wanted the lefty-lefty match. Right. That's what I, That's where I would have went. They're not going that way. No, they have confirmed that Yusei Kikuchi is going to be the third guy. That's locked yeah. in. Right now, it's, it's between that fourth game or that fifth game, whether or not it's going to be Bowden or Gosman. Personally, for me... I think you you let Bowden play against the Rays and you give the Astros to Kevin Gosman. I just think that, one, it's an additional day of rest if that's any concern to anybody. Two, it's the start of a new series. Three, you're at the Astros. If that's the first uh, game that Bowden Francis is going to pitch right. in this season, that is a scary place to be. And you said it yourself, that lineup is just intimidating. It's all holy hell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd I mean, be okay with giving it to Gosman. I definitely like agree where Houston is is harder. But pick your poison. I mean, Joe Siddle even said that Gosman has bad numbers against the Astros. Yeah, so it's, it's like, true. That's also true. You know, Got to pick your poison just a little bit. <laughs> I feel like everybody's got bad numbers against the yeah, Astros. Yeah, who man. doesn't, right? Hey, really quick shout out to Eton2700 with the donut saying, are you guys live streaming on Thursday? Mm -hmm. You bet your bottom dollar we are, Eton. Uh, we're going to be live on Thursday. We have a podcast coming out in the morning kind of breaking down the opening day roster and like the whole series preview. Yep. So you don't want to miss it, guys. We're going live all week. Weekend. Yeah, in fact, just to yeah clarify that, literally every single game, Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the Blue Jays Today boys are going to be live on YouTube watching those games, doing some pregame, postgame stuff. It's going to be great, guys, mm -hmm. so stay freaking tuned. Also, quick shout-out to Will Green, who just got his Blue Jays Today hat. Let's go! For opening day. Let's go! That's what I like to see, man. That's what I like to see. For those of you out there wondering, dude, just take, I mean, yeah. like, seriously, like, it's I know, we, you know, we got to gas ourselves up here, but, like, 
I think this is fucking sick. Dude, it's that's literally my favorite thing. Uh, I've I've kind of snuck it and worn it a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I am getting a second one coming, so I'm going to make that one my permanent one, but I, I'm excited, man. It's Yeah, I really like it. So shout out to Will for, for locking that down, guys. And we will see everybody on Thursday. But let's move over to that bullpen. Some, mm. uh, some scary updates, not what you want to see. You got the good news in Kevin Gosman. Not so good news when it comes to Eric Swanson. And Jordan Romano. Yeah, here's Arden Zwelling coming out here saying, Jordan Romano, elbow, Eric Swanson, forearm, are very likely to start on the year on the IL. Yeah. That's tough. That means, you know, yeah, at least 10 days right there. They're probably going to have to get built up a little bit. I know that they're already starting to begin a little bit of catching, a little bit of, a little bit of slowly ramping up. Uh, but the point is, opening day is in days, yeah. and we're not going to have our two best relievers. So that's going to be a huge loss. You're going to see a lot of guys in the back end of that bullpen. You know, you got Chad Green, Jimmy Garcia feels like if you were just to pick somebody to close games, mm -hmm. Jimmy Garcia, maybe Tim Mesa if it's a lot of lefty. I think you're going to go based on the situation. Like if, you, if you're if you facing the Houston Astros and you've got Tucker and Alvarez coming up, you're probably going Tim Mesa to close out the game right there. Uh, but then again, here's the thing. It's going to be all situational based. What if we get to a point where it's, it's you know, you got Alvarez up, the tie runs at second, you, you got to shut him down. Who are you bringing in? If it's mm -hmm. late innings. It's the seventh. You got to bring in Tim Mesa, right? So, like, I think it's going to be all situational base. It won't be like you're the guy. It's yeah. going to be, especially with the weak bullpen, and we got to eat some innings. It's ready to go. Well, we here's the problem, right? We lost both of our guys. Because yeah. I would have said, well, if Jordan Romano's down, then you might go Swanson, but you lost him too. So, yeah. both of the guy guys are they're gone and they're going to be recovering yeah. so in the meantime yeah it's going to be up to everybody else to step up and the biggest worry for me isn't necessarily who's going to save games because i think that you have guys mm -hmm. that can come in and that can put in work right jimmy garcia the ceilings for this dude it's really high the floor is low but yeah. the ceilings are really high you got chad green he saved some games before it's you know it's happened right he could do a thing and you said tim mesa so i'm not too concerned about just the, the save opportunities in general and closing games, maybe maybe you'll see some issues at some point. What I'm most concerned about is the fact that it's going to mean that you're going to have two guys in that pen that you don't necessarily want to have. Yeah, yeah. It's going to have be two names that you didn't really want. And then also, too, some of the other guys are going to get taxed. They're just going to get taxed. Yeah, I mean, looking at the obvious guys uh, to fill up that bullpen, you've got Nate Pearson, Zach Pop. Uh, Yager Rodriguez, is he going to be healthy? I'm not too sure uh, about that. I don't know. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And then Wes Parsons. Uh, those are all kind of the options. And if we look over at the active roster, everybody, I mean, there's a ton of names here. Uh, I, I truly think, even though we got Kevin Gosman back, and I don't think this guy's going to be the fifth starter anymore, obviously, because you got Kevin Gosman back. Mm -hmm. Mitch White, though, is probably going to break camp because you need innings. Like, it, <laughs> that thing keeps falling off. Total know. sidebar, guys. We got to, like... But we'll, we'll, we have the wheel coming up, everybody. A little side note. So stay tuned to the end of the video for that. Um, but look, you need innings. He has zero options left. You're not going to cut him. He's going to start with the team. And you're going to keep riding him until your innings feel like you've got replenished. Even though they're not great innings, they're, they're innings. But you want to avoid injury. You'd rather avoid injury uh, and have Mitch White give you like three bad innings a week than to have a bunch of guys get injured. Well, at the end of the day, Mitch White is a baseball player, and we yeah. just need baseball players to play baseball right now. Yeah. We don't have the luxury to be picking and choosing. No. You yeah. know, it's just like, look, you're healthy and ready to go. Well, that's what it's going to have to be for today, you know? <laughs> so I think that it just is what it is. Now, Joe Siddle, again, the guy that we were talking to just a couple minutes before this, he was throwing some names around, saying mm -hmm. maybe Zach Pop could come up. Maybe yeah. Zach, Cop, uh, Zach Pop could play a few innings. Nate Pearson could do a little, little something, yeah. something. And then obviously he was also talking to about Ricky Tiedman. Now, Ricky Tiedman is the most exciting guy out of all of those dudes, right? Mm -hmm. I think we can all agree, like Ricky Tiedman, like extremely exciting. And, and the second that I see the notification that Ricky Tiedman is called up, if it's going to happen, I'm on board. Yeah. I'm on yeah. the train, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I want to watch this guy play baseball. But at the same point, you got to evaluate the risk and look at the reward. Do we want to start the clock? Yeah. Because that's that's a you roster management you, you thing. You lose a year right there. You lose a right. year right there when you do that. Do we want this to be the moment that he comes up? Do, do we feel like it's rushed? Is it the right time? If he gets blown up, how do you feel about that? Is yeah. he okay with it? Are you guys okay with it? Right. Yeah, I, I mentioned in the video, too. I think it's a lot of – not saying he can't do it because he looks like he's got the stuff. It's just, you know, asking a 21-year-old prospect to – 
come up and, and be flexible like that. I mean, he's used to a routine where he wants to be built up to be a starting pitcher and to ask him to, the, to be a swing man and then go in the bullpen and then now you're going to start here. And it, I'd rather keep him in double or triple, excuse me, get built up. Like these guys only threw 62 innings if you count Arizona Fall League last year. Get him built up some more. Get him to 100. That's that next step. And then maybe you call him up the following year. He could pitch you 120. And that's the hope. And then the next year, 150. You know, you slowly start to build up at your arm. You, you don't want to rush him up, get injured, have your regular playing. Now you're pitching a bunch. Now you're not. I think you got to be safe with him. For me, it's mostly just about the time in the season. You know, like I'm uh... – it's the beginning and mm -hmm. it's the start of everything. If we're mid year, if we're mid year and Nate Pearson has not been doing well and Zach Pop is just, you know, like, well, I think we know what Zach Pop's going to be, then that's different for me. And let's say Ricky Deedman's down in the minors and healthy, then that's different. And we need somebody to come up, fine, do it. But right at the beginning of the season, that just, it doesn't really make sense for me. You know, try out Nate Pearson again. Who knows? Maybe you'll get some quality innings out of him. Right? It that's, happens occasionally. That's the thing. You just need guys who have pitched in the major leagues before. At this point, we, and like you said before, we can't be picky with injuries, right? And just have guys use their options. And you're okay with using their options, using Nate's, using Zach's, using uh, Whip Mitch White's. He's literally got none left. But like you're okay with cutting him after, he, after you don't need more innings, right? Yeah. So just you, this is the Band-Aid solution for right now until we have a more clear identity and where our health is a little bit later down the line. If we suffer a big injury in that bullpen or in the starting rotation later, and you know maybe Yari Rodriguez isn't ready, or maybe he's already being used and there's still a spot. If a spot opens up later down the line, that's where I can see Ricky T. Yeah. Now, um, people have been talking a bit about Yari Rodriguez, and uh, and for me, that's almost the same, but even more so, uh, because when you're talking about innings, when you're talking about length, again, if he if we get the notification that he's coming up. I'm cool. on the train. I'm, the I'm excited. I, I want to see this guy play yeah. baseball because yeah. this was one of my favorite signings of the entire Toronto Blue Jays offseason just yeah. because the ceiling that this guy has, uh, I think it's really high. Yeah. I would I would caution the Jays to do it, and I think that they're not going to just because, uh, well, you're, you know, the point that you're bringing up about Ricky Tiedemann is, well, he didn't barely play any innings, innings last year. Jorge Rodriguez yeah. didn't even play baseball, yeah. really. Yeah, he yeah. played in the World Baseball Classic, and that was that. You know, so yeah. this guy, it has been a long time since this dude has seriously been on the mound against serious competition. Yeah. Can you imagine bringing that guy in after he barely played last year and he's facing the Astros? Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, very, man. Si very similar. So, um, obviously, he's done it in the in the past in some capacity, uh, but he does need to get built up. He's kind of like a little prospect for us, too. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, that's that's the dilemma right now, guys. I know when we say Mitch White and Zach Pop and Pearson, you guys will probably get really ugh, disgusted at that and like not super confident. Again, just a Band-Aid solution. We got to get Romano back healthy. I'd rather take this time. Yes, it's not a great timing with the schedule. I'd rather do this than rush him back and have him get injured in a month from now and mm -hmm. be out even longer. I'd rather it happen now. Just pump these a little bit. Hey, they're still coming back from spring training and stuff too. Right? Like, they're still trying to get ramped up like all these other teams. You know, I'm not too familiar with how their injuries are on, on the Astros or the Tampa Bay Rays or, you know, the Yankees. But, look, they got to get adjusted, too. So, maybe that's the best time to do it. Who knows? Yeah, and uh, and I do think that it's just going to require the offense of the Toronto Blue yeah. Jays to pick up a little bit of the slack. All of last year, all of last year, everybody, the Toronto Blue Jays pitching was carrying this squad. Mm -hmm. They were carrying. They had them on their back. It is now time for the offense to do the same, which brings us to the next mm -hmm. portion of this video. It is that time to crown Jay of the Week. Yeah, it is time for the Jay of the Week, everybody. And it is brought to you by Tim Horton's Roll Up to Win. The winner this week is our daddy, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Atta boy, let's go. Let's go. Now, funny enough, and I want to tease this just a little bit. Funny enough, we were talking about Joe. We're talking to Joe Siddle mm -hmm. about Vladimir Guerrero Jr., mm -hmm. and he's actually a little bit kind of concerned. So you guys will have to check out the podcast. But it doesn't take away from the fact that this guy put up some ungodly numbers yeah. this week in spring training. Yeah, no, he was phenomenal, folks. I think the OPS was over 1.2 yeah. this past week. Yeah. The guy batted 500. Yeah, that's crazy. Like that's just insane. 
14 um, out bats, but you know, yeah, seven for small 14. sample size. But uh, you're right, like that's a that's a regular week yeah. in regular baseball, yeah. you know. And yeah. if he did that in the first week, like, oh my God, we are laughing. In fact, if the whole can you flash over the, the yeah, show yeah. everybody this. Uh, if the, one second, I gotta just if the whole offense did what they did in this past week. Holy mother of God, like, we're laughing. This is a mm -hmm. Series W if I've ever seen one. Turner was incredible. Guerrero was great. <laughs> Kevin Kiermeyer, I, I say it kind of for laughing. Your guy guy. My guy guy. Yeah, he was popping <laughs> off, right? Everybody seemingly was, was doing really well, and that's the type of contributions that we need. But we've said it time and time again. Joe Siddle echoed it as well, saying that the big boys need to bop. Guerrero is your guy guy for yeah. the Toronto Blue Jays. And when he goes... The Blue Jays go, and he was going this past week. Now, it is interesting, again, what he was talking <laughs> about with Vlad. Yeah, you'll have to and, check it out, guys. Yeah, you'll have to check it out. Um, but it's, it's just funny. Like, I'm looking at the numbers on the page, and I'm going, wow, it's got about 500. Yeah. But maybe he's not all there. It, hey, it's interesting to see. It, it, what's going to be interesting to see is, can he do it this week in the regular season when you have game plans and the pitchers are trying to get you out, especially those sneaky rays? So... Vladdy, we'd love to see you do it for when it's real, man. And another quick shout out to Tim Horton's roll up to win, guys. Promotion goes on to March 31st, so you got it for opening day, too. Grab yeah. yourself a Tim Horton's cup and see if you win. For real, guys. For real. Shout out to Tim freaking Horton's, dude. Uh, one guy that, uh, that I did want to bring up here, um, and we were talking about him as well, George Springer. What a spring. Oh, what, a, what a great yeah. spring that George Springer yeah. had for the Toronto Blue Jays. I found this out the other day. I mean, I knew it. Like, if you would have asked me about it, I would have thought about it. I would have known. But it wasn't at the top of my mind. We are now halfway through the George Springer contract. Yeah. We are literally halfway through that contract. And Ben Nicholson Smith was saying when we were talking to him, uh, yeah, like, you know, George Springer's been good, but I think that you would have wanted to have more. You would have wanted to have that 35 home run season. You would have wanted mm. to have that big home run in the playoffs. Uh, and last year especially – Fuck, I, I would have just taken a, a, a good leadoff guy, yeah. and it felt like he was he just wasn't fully there. Yeah. Are we on to something here with George Springer? Uh, I mean, it is spring training, right? Like, you got to have him click. I mean, it's a positive sign. You know, 41 at bat, 17 hits. You know, look at the stats right here, 415 average. His on base is about 100 points over. And again, it is just a small sample size. But, so I'm not going to let that affect what I'm about to say, which is still the same, man. I, same thing I said before the season. We got to have him click. He's got to stick to what George Springer does best, and that's just ripping the ball hard, right? How are you going to do it? You got to stay on time. You got to stay compact. Rip the ball hard. Pull the ball over the left field wall. That's where George Springer made all his money mm -hmm. was he, when he hits homers. We need Springer dingers. So going from that Springer dinger guy to last year, weak contact, one of the weaker sides on like the bottom half, of the percentiles and hard hit percentage like you can't have that and yeah did we expect regression yes do we expect this much regression this early no i think what would save the contract and make me feel a little bit better about having him on the leadoff spot is going back to give me something like an 800 right? yeah, give, yeah give me give me something where i can feel proud to say okay i i'm excited to see george springer hit here i didn't feel that like that last no year. i know man and when again when you go back to some of those seasons where like that one year where uh in 2022 i think it was where he's here he's really good when he's on the field um, you know, but obviously he was injured a lot. Yeah. And 2021 when he had a 900 OPS and he played half the season. Right. Like, that's right. wild. Um, but we were, we were scared of the top of the order, right? When you looked at it and it was Springer and Bo and Vlad, and it was like, holy shit. And like, Marcus Samuel. These guys are, I know, Marcus yeah, Samuel, we're not even going to talk about him. <laughs> that guy's still doing really well. But those guys, right, those guys could bop, like, and you could you could get on top of somebody in the first inning. It could be yep. 3 nothing, and, and, you know, we're not even in the bottom of the first yet. The Jays are just rolling over this pitcher, and we just never really got that last year. I want to, at some point in this season, look at that top three and feel the way that I felt about them mm. again, you know? That's what like, I want. It feels like nostalgia, you know? I want to feel the way I felt in 2021. Even, tw give me 2022. They did what they did in 2022. I, we're good. Right. We're good again, right? But... We got to see, man. It, it's going to be tough. Well, because you, you look at the lineup, it goes uh, question mark, George Springer. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Solid. assuming assuming that uh, um, who are you going to put? Yeah, Bichette, I was, yeah. was going to say, assuming that Bichette is two, then yeah, like very solid in Bo Bichette. Question mark and Guerrero. Yep. I think, you know, solid, not as solid as Bo Bichette. 
four in Justin Turner. You, yeah, you know what you're going to get. It's not a question mark. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then you got Alhonzo Kirk, which I do. I think my bias is going to creep in when I right. say I feel like he's a sure thing, but obviously he had the bad year, so you got to give him a question mark label. Correct. You Correct. Know? Yeah. And again, look, I don't want to spoil too much, but Joe Siddle's on that guy's train. Oh, yeah. Joe we Siddle's on it. that we guy's train, it. man. <laughs> I, and I am on the Alejandro Kirk bounce back, too. Like, again, we're going to talk about good springs. Uh, Alejandro Kirk, yeah. holy mother of God, that guy was swinging this thing and we need him to especially because of that Danny Jansen injury that's something that's going completely yeah. underrated we're talking about Romano we're talking about Eric Swanson yeah. I'm just hoping that we don't even realize that Danny Jansen's hurt because that's how good Alejandro yeah. Kirk is playing you know like four more than you give up right and like Danny Jansen we're we have a luxury where we have Kirk now taking over like if we didn't have Kirk you'd notice it a lot more a oh, thousand percent. For, for example, if you're the Baltimore Orioles, you lose Adley Rutschman. Oh, you notice that. Oh my God, yeah. That's that. that's a huge blow if they lost him. And right now, if we lost Alejandro Kirk, my gosh, that would yeah. be really bad. Before we get to the next segment, uh, we do got to give a quick shout mm -hmm. out, I think, to some of the guys who ended up making this roster. Brian Servin being yes. one of them. Yes. Daniel Berger. Yes, uh, baby. Locking it in. <laughs> He's on the team. Shout out to him. That's something that I'm actually really yeah. excited for. That's like a, you know, that's a bench bat who I am going to be really excited Dude, to see come off the bench. He drove in another run today. Just an RBI single right there. Dude, Dude, what, are the, what are the MVP odds? What are the, ask Shohei Otani. He'll know. Just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. No, yeah. but seriously, I mean, Danny Berger is a, is a, he's such a, he's such a likable guy. Shout out and thank you to the person that just subscribed right there. I am upset in a, in a sense that we're not going to see Joey Votto, but that just means that it's going to be, I'm hoping, you know, a happy surprise in May when Votto comes up or yeah. when, when it happens, because I think it's yeah. going to be a win. And they said Joey Votto's going to stay down in Florida, the Florida, Florida Complex League, and get built up there. Right. I and mean, that makes the most sense. You don't want to send Joey Votto on the road. License. Like, you know, you, yeah, you sent him there to get some competitive games, like maybe a week, mm -hmm. and then we're back. He's in, up. Uh, we're backing up the majors, which is unfortunate for Danny Burgers. I think he's hot right now, but. You know, maybe we just ride his hot streak until Vado's ready and he starts to fall off. Oh, and dude, boom. that's that's you know? the leash. I promise you this, guys. Yeah. I promise you this. If there is a stretch of twenty to thirty at bats where Daniel Vogelbach is like not performing really well, Votto. it's Vado now. Yeah, that's Easy. how short the leash is going to be. Like Easy. we're talking one or one and a half weeks yeah. of like not great performance, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. In the end of the day, you're a minor league contract. You're going to come up and we'll DFA you once you're once you're done. It's kind of wild. Like I. I know the players don't like to focus on that kind of stuff, but you gotta imagine the back of his mind, he knows like there's not much time here. I just gotta keep playing. Yeah. Because that, that's like, that's what they told Votto. I mean, I mean not Votto. That's what they told Vogelbach. Uh, John Schneider's like when they when they signed Votto, hey, just keep playing. And he's been keep playing in uh, in spring training. He's doing well. If he keeps playing in the regular season. Hey, no reason to cut him. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, at the end of the day, Daniel Ber Danny Berger controls his own destiny. <laughs> if you have a 900 OPS, you're not going anywhere, guys. Yeah. You're not going anywhere. Dude, that's wild. I just thought, like, if you get cold at all, you're done. You're done. You're the done. pressure. Oh, no, it's, it's you massive. You can't let it get into your head, Danny Berger. No. You got to still smash. It's 100% massive. And I'm hoping that we actually see a little bit of that, that pressure on Bo and on Vladdy and on George this year because, I mean, for those guys, like, especially Bo and Vlad with two years left on their deal, right. you know, nothing's really guaranteed. You're not going to get sent down to the minors or anything, yeah. but now you're paying for the, you're playing for the big payday, you know? Yeah, good pressure because, like, you don't want to get pressure, like, I keep mentioning Joe Siddle. What a great podcast that was. Oh, I know. <laughs> you guys got to watch it tomorrow. Uh, but uh, the good pressure where you're not trying to force something yes. and then your swing starts collapsing. Yes. You know, so you got you to keep it going. You got to keep staying calm and compact and rhythmic, rhythmic. Uh, in your swing and uh, keep putting barrels on the baseball. Don't That's it. get in your head. Don't get, Don't in, your get head. in your head. Don't get in your head. Uh, folks, like I said, Thursday, we're going to be live watching the game. Mm -hmm. And I want to be watching for something. Let's do the next freaking segment. Yeah. Let's spin the goddamn wheel. Yeah. The spinning fortune, baseball, colorful, future determining, stat analyzing, and uh, it's a wheel that we spin every week. That's right, everybody. It is a wheel that we spin every single week. It's back, baby. It's back. We're doing a little bit of uh, construction right here, uh, as yeah. you might see on this camera. Uh, it, literally, we just, so that's why we were a little bit late today. We just pulled it out <laughs> and like we had to get it set up. We had to, we're like, oh, the, the things are falling off. And, and we're like, okay, let's just, let's just go. We gotta get live. Uh, but if you guys aren't familiar with the wheel every week, Blue Jays today, boys. We spin this wheel. We pick three categories uh, that you'll see up here. J Killer, K per nine, run scored, OPS average, 
you know, we land on a category and the boys, we pick it and we think who's going to do the best. Obviously, short week, mm -hmm. just four game series uh, for just a bit of history. We've done this three years. Nick's won two. He won the last one. I won Crunched one. Him. Uh, yeah, that, most years have been close. That was a that was, that was no. That was honestly like think about um, think about the 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 playoffs last year. That was like Adam's season for the Jays. That was like Adam. honestly, I was, it, I it was felt the like twins, that. You know? It felt like that. All right. So with that being said, I think uh, how should we do it? Should we we had a thing before? Was it winner or loser? I, I thought think it was loser winner. gets the pick if they go first or second to start off. Because like did? you because you have the because we essentially you have the uh, you have the. You get a little bit of advantage. Okay, all right. So with that being said, I'm gonna let you take the first spin of the wheel sure. uh, for the two, because it's a short week. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm we'll good see. with it, let's go guys. Gonna spin this lightly because I don't want the things to fall off, but what is the first category of the year let's going go. to be? The wheel is back. ERA starters. ERA starters. Oh, that's Listen. a tricky one. Uh, yeah, it is, and and it's. I'm totally confident in, in letting you go first on this one, okay. because whoever you don't pick, I will happily take that it's, second guy. That's a very fair, very fair. Oh, look at that. We had ERA right there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna take, not that guy. <laughs> Gosman showed up on our screen. We have no idea. It's, it's either Rios or it's gonna be Bassett. Yeah, and you literally like the first two comments goes Bassett and then Barrios. Yeah, so I, I think you, you really can really flip a coin. You're not going look, wrong here. I love Bassett. I think he's gonna be great. I think he's gonna be phenomenal. Uh, but if I'm saying Barrios is gonna have one of the best years ever and I'm gonna stick to it, I don't wanna get off that train. I gotta rock with my guy at opening day. Yes, there's an opening day curse. Not this year. It's Jose Barrios. You're gonna be my dude. Dude, you said he would finish top three in Cy That's literally yeah. it. So what, what am I saying? Literally. <laughs> no, I think that's a lock for you. I will, I will yeah. happily <laughs> take Chris Bassett here. Uh, I mean, the guy's been great and just continues to be great. So, Hound, you are my guy. Let's go. Next category, that means I'm going to go uh, first on both of the following categories, yep. everybody. Yep. What yep. is it going to be? I never hit bonus player last year, so it didn't really matter. I think you hit it right at the end. I got a couple. Like, yeah. I got a couple right at the end. It was already said and done at that point. Ribbies. RBI. Um, interesting. Um, okay. We're going first here. I am going to go first here. Uh, well, let's look at the lineup, everybody. Let's look at the lineup. Shout out to just subscribe. Thank you very much. Uh, you got George Springer leading off. We're not mm -hmm. going there. You got Bobuchet probably batting second. I mean, that's always a good shout, but I don't think I'm going to do it. Right. Now, you got a hot Guerrero. You got a hot Guerrero batting third, but apparently, according to Joe Siddle, he's a little worried. You do have a locked in, mm -hmm. stable Justin Turner going for, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. who I'm going to go with. That's a good show. That's a good show because that kind of forces me. Like, it feels like I have to go Vladdy because, yeah, Bo mm -hmm. could come up. And, and Bo, you know what? Maybe that is a good show. Vladdy is hot. You are up against the Tampa Bay Rays, and Tampa Bay Rays can pitch Vladdy well, whereas the Bo Bichette, like, he's got no holes. He's got no holes. Yeah. This is a tough one. I'll tell you right now. I was actually debating between um, I was debating between Turner or, or Alejandro. Yeah, yeah, and I, I was that, that was the other thing, Kirk. too. It was like I could go Kirk. You know, is he going to get started all the days? You know, you probably have Servin come in and, and do one day, and you got to utilize all your days. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I got to have my guys in the lineup. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we got here? We got Guerrero, Springers. Eh, pretty, much. pretty split right now. Somebody said Varsho. Interesting yeah. show. Uh, Next thing, I got show. a good show, Sophie, and like I got to see, like, is he going to be batting fifth? Like, is he going to look good into the season? Mm -hmm. Turner, he's already there. Actually, got to put you right up there. Mm -hmm. See, my my gut wants to go Vladdy, but my brain wants to go Bichette. And I don't know what I did more last year, gut or brain. I think I did a lot of braining last year. I tried to outbrain myself. Right. <laughs> so I'm not gonna overthink it. I think I'm just gonna go Guerrero. Uh, he's hot right now. He won Jay of the Week. Yeah. The Let's guy, see what he at does. At the end of the day, man, the guy batted 500 last week in yeah. spring training. In spring training, gotta clarify that. Yeah. But that's pretty yeah. damn good. So. Oh, wait, whoops. It's the uh, wrong one here. Oh, no problem. Yeah. So you're locking in Vlad. I think that's a good shout, guys. I'm locking in Justin Turner. He was also really hot this week too. Let's not yeah. forget, Justin Turner was doing really good this past week as well. He was. And the guy is going to be locked in as the four hitter in the I, Toronto Blue Jays. Went, I'm happy with that. If you went anybody other than Turner, I would have been so happy. To do oh that. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I think that's. Uh, I'm happy with that pick. All right, spinning the wheel again, folks. Last category, what's it gonna be? We no missed out on the bonus player, home and run. we're going to home run. See, this one, this one's a tough one, especially last year, I felt like I hated home runs. It was like, flip a coin, who's gonna hit one this week? That's we the thing, know. right? And, and there was really nobody who was like hitting more than one. No. Um, it was no. like, you hit one and that's all. Um, the first one. This is a, you know, 
I feel like this week, it's almost like I'm taking a pitch. You know, like I'm really just like seeing what's that's what. It. Like I don't that's, know what's gonna happen. That's Anything why I gave you. Happen. That's why I gave you two because I'm like I don't know what's gonna happen and, here. And let's know? face it, man, this category could really easily just end a tie. Absolutely. Both zero. This Absolutely. category could really easily just end a tie. There's not that many games. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in wild right here, but I'm gonna yeah. go nuts. We're gonna go Dalton Varsho. Okay. We're gonna go Dalton it. Varsho. I love it. Um. Hmm. Now I, I could do, I could do a couple things. I could play defense here and go Turner. But if I'm saying Vladdy is That's gonna the get thing. the RBIs, I saying. gotta double down. I gotta double down, and I really don't know either. So Vladdy is gonna get the RBIs, but is he gonna hit the homers? I, that's the thing. He is the is the biggest home run hitter on the team, so I guess I gotta go Vladdy. Look, it's not a bad shot, man. I mean, I was considering going Guerrero there as well, and that would be, yeah, again, like playing a little bit of but defense, right? Right, right. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, like we're talking up Varsho. We're thinking that Varsho looks really good. He's had a really solid spring. He's gonna be in. The, he's got some pop as well, right? Like the guy could hit 30 this year. Yeah. You yeah. know, I think it, the the player who wins this is gonna hit one. Yeah. So yeah. can Varsho put one over the fence? Who knows? Yeah, and if Vladdy hits a homer, I feel like I got a good chance there. I mean, Turner could definitely come up with some more opportunities. But mm. uh, I'm hoping for an opening day Vladdy Daddy bomb and maybe a, a, a two RBI single mix in there, and then we're gonna lock that one down. Exactly, folks. That was the Blue Jays Today show. Effectively, the first one of the regular season. I know yeah. we're not officially there. But we're kind of there. We're pretty much there, yeah. guys. We're going to have that Joe Settle podcast come out tomorrow morning. We're going to have a little skit come out on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, oh, baby, mm -hmm. that is going to be a day full of BJT content. So we want to see all of you guys there. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, guys, hit that like button and smash that subscribe button. Turn on the post notifications so you get notified when we're going to go live, when we're posting all these great videos around the Blue Jays today. Yeah. Also, shout out to our Patreon members and YouTube members, yes. too. You guys are amazing. Yes, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, Go Jays Go! go! We're back, baby!